Hi, and welcome to our road trip through Romney Marsh. This is the second and final part of the journey. And we'd love you to subscribe so you can follow us on our journeys near and far. And as you saw from the title, our little English road trip is going to take us to the beautiful county of Kent in the southeast of the UK. And this little UK road trip starts at junction 11 at the M20 motorway. And in part one, we visited Hyde, Dimchurch, New Romney before arriving at Dungeness. So today we start here before heading up to the historic town of Lyd, St Clement's Church at Old Romney, the Thomas Beckett Church at Fairfield, before returning to our route and passing the beautiful Red Lion pub at Snargate, heading on to the fabulous Appledore, and then a cross country route back to the M20. So without further ado, let's continue this journey. And this is one great reason to visit Kent, the fabulous, the unique Dungeness. Once again, I'm starting with a Bijou snippet. We've got a full video of Dungeness, and I'll pop a link up at the very end so you can explore a little bit more if you wish. And I have to be honest, this is one of my absolute favourite places to visit in the southeast of England. It's so remote and so desolate. It's its mixture of its wide open beaches with its history of its fishing fleet. And it's still fished today off the Kent coast, both large and small. It's a beautifully quiet and peaceful place. And then there's the interesting buildings, like Prospect Cottage, the home of the late Derek Jarman. There's also the history of this part of Kent and its relationship with the sea, with its magnificent lighthouses. And then there's one of those things to do in Kent that I think is a real must, and that's a ride on the Romney Hyde and Dimchurch miniature steam railway. Now Dungeness may be one of my favourite places in Kent, but it's time to hit the road again. And this is when we start to see the real Romney Marsh, with its flat and open landscape. And we're now travelling through the Dungeness National Nature Reserve, and it's very popular with bird watchers as it attracts a lot of migratory species. And a great way to explore this part of Kent is with the Ordnance Survey maps or the OS app. Both are fantastic. I'll pop a link in the description so you can find out more. And as you'll notice, this landscape is ideal for the cyclist who likes the flat terrain. The only word of warning is, you can get a fairly strong headwind. And this is our first junction after leaving Dungeness. We're going to carry on straight over the roundabout to the historic town of Lyd. So what makes this a historic town in Kent? Well, it's part of the Confederation of St. Paul's, being a limb of New Romney. It also has the 13th century All Saints Church, which happens to be the longest church in Kent, and known as the Cathedral of the Marsh. In fact, I'm using that to guide us to the centre of the town. And another interesting, if not historic fact, is that this is the most southernmost town in Kent. And here's that All Saints Church as we enter town. Time to look for a parking space, I think. And now let's have a quick look around town. Like so many towns and villages in Kent, this seems to be stuck in its own little time bubble. Not that that's a bad thing. And here we have the town hall with the town's coat of arms, based on a 13th century seal, which had a spire on top of All Saints Church. And it also features a ship, because Lid used to be an island. It's now two and a half miles away from the sea. And as you look down the high street, you won't see any of the familiar shops and brands that you're so used to. This has a distinctly unique appeal. Now let's take a look at that church. And it truly is grand. It just seems odd that it's so big. 
given the size of the town. And now let's look at another historic building of Kent, identified by the diamond shaped russet plaque on the building. This is the old courthouse of Lyd. Lyd has its own small town museum, which was closed on the day we were visiting, so one for next time. Another place of interest was the Memorial Square with its cross of sacrifice to remember the war dead. Anyway, we're back on the road and heading off to explore more of Kent. So we're heading back through town and enjoying the historic buildings as we go. We leave Lid heading north, past Lid Airport. Yes, Lid has an airport. And a fact, interest or not, you decide, Lid was the first English airport built after the Second World War. Anyway, are you enjoying our little English road trip? Leave us a comment, we'd love to know. Anyway, we're now joining an A road, the A259, signposted towards Hastings and Ashford but we're actually heading towards Old Romney. And now there's more of that flat open marshland that is Romney Marsh. And now let's take a look to our right, our next destination of the Church of St Clements. And of course you were paying attention. It's in the village of Old Romney. As you guessed, Old Romney is going to be pretty old. It was replaced by New Romney, and that's listed in the Doomsday Book. It's now quite a small place, but we're here for one reason, and that's to visit the historic St Clement's Church, which is up this lane to our right. Once again, you're deep in historic Kent, where time really does seem to have stood still. And the church has appeared in a 1963 Walt Disney production, Dr. Sim, alias the Scarecrow, based on one of the Russell Thorndike novels in the Dr. Sin series of a reverend smuggler and his nefarious deeds. And within the churchyard of St. Clements, you'll find the grave of Derek Jarman, the filmmaker, artist and gay rights activist whose home we saw in Dungeness a little earlier. So back on the road, we turn back onto the A259 and continue our journey northwest. As I said, this route starts at junction 11 of the M20 which is close to both the Euro Tunnel Terminal and the Dover Ferry Ports. So for visitors from mainland Europe, it makes it a very convenient English road trip. And you may notice on our route, there are laybys, as well as reminders to drive on the left. And now the chance for a slight diversion from our road trip. If you turn left at this roundabout, towards Hastings and Brooklyn, and then follow the signs for Fairfield, you will come across the iconic Thomas Beckett Church. Oh, and also notice the petrol station on our left hand side. They can be few and far between on the Romney Marsh. And by magic we arrive at Fairfield. And in the distance, that iconic Thomas Beckett Church. And another star of film and TV, appearing in a couple of adaptations of Charles Dickens, Great Expectations, 
and also Parade's End. And I think the reason this is such an iconic view of the Romney Marshes is the Romney Marsh sheep, the isolation, and also the channels, the waterways, the sewers, the original meaning of the English word. And this is why I love to explore King. These beautiful locations hidden in plain sight. Anyway, time waits for no man, so let's head back onto the original route. And our next destination will be Appledore. Now I could have trimmed this part of the video back, but I really wanted to show you once again the beauty of the Romney Marshes and this part of the Kent countryside. And what could be better than a Kent country pub inside its 1940s theme? And today it seems to be very popular with the historic and not so historic motorcycle enthusiasts. If you're interested, it's the Red Lion at Snargate. And now we're coming up to the only mainline railway station on this part of our journey, and that's Appledore. What I would like to point out though is Appledore Station is quite a distance from Appledore, the town we're going to visit, so just watch and you'll see what I mean. It's a distance isn't it? And also just out of interest on our right hand side is the Royal Military Canal which we first saw in Hyde in part one of this road trip. And what's that I see? Cornish flag? Surely I'm in the wrong place. No, this is Appledore in Kent, a beautiful small village which we're now going to explore. The first thing you'll notice about Appledore is how picture, postcard, perfect it is. That's a tongue twister. With its tea rooms, unique little shops, and of course, a lovely country pub. It makes the ideal stopover on your Romney Marsh road trip. The thing about Appledore that I find amazing is that despite being 10 miles from the sea, this used to be a port. In 892, 280 ships of the Dutch fleet moored here. However, its fate as a port was sealed in the great storms of 1287. Oh, and just before we leave town, I do need to point out that there is a free car park in town. Now, we're heading westerly out of Appledore, and strictly speaking, we're on the outskirts of the Romney Marsh. But there's still plenty to experience, like the Gusborne Wine Estate, and they offer a number of tours and experiences. If you're interested, I'll drop a link in the description below. Now, you've probably noticed that the landscape on our road trip has changed somewhat. Now we've risen above Romney Marsh, and we're following the signs towards Hythe, the first destination on this entire Kentish road trip. We'll be passing through many small villages as we make our way back. Each of them will offer you a chance for either a country pub or normally a village tea room. One interesting little town you'll come across on this route is Ham Street. And remember, all the time we're following signs towards Hyde. That way you won't get lost. So what do you think? Is this a great way to discover Kent? Let us know. Leave us a comment in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed it, then give us a like. And best of all, why not subscribe so you catch more of our travels. And there we go, another country pub. We should have kept a tally on this. 
Has anyone done that? Drop a number in the comments below. I'd love to know how many pubs we've passed. And another junction. And we're still following the signs towards Hythe. And heading towards Lim. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I normally struggle with foreign place names, but English ones, not normally a problem. Although there are some interesting ones. Like we're passing through Court at Street. Does anyone know where that comes from? Again, if you've got an answer, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to know. Now this footbridge above us leads to the Port Limp Wild Animal Park. Once again, a great day out if you're in the area. Well worth checking out. So we need to take a left here to go to the entrance. And there you go. The entrance to the park is on our left. And you need to follow this road until you reach the A20 and then follow signs for the M20. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what we put together. Stay safe, stay well.